let's look at how we can use calculus to prove a few of our constant acceleration equations using integration. And in this case, we're going to start with a is equal to a constant, meaning no change with time. And we're going to start with our definition for the acceleration that the acceleration is equal to dv dt. Well, if I work with that particular equation, I could rearrange that equation to say dv is equal to a dt. So I've multiplied my dt up and then just flipped over the sides to make it look a little bit more familiar. So now what I want to do is use integration. I want to integrate both sides of this equation. Do the same thing to both sides of the equation and it's still equal to each other. But we need to look carefully at our limits for integration. Well, for time, we've been saying that we're going from 0 up to some final time. Now, we've been calling the final time t, but just to make it nice and clear, we're going to call that tf for right now. And our velocity at a time 0, well, that's what we've been calling vi. And our velocity at this final time, tf, we've been calling vf. Now, if you're having a little bit of troubles with integration, you might need to go back and look at some of your calculus resources. But we can take a look here real quick at this left side. When I integrate dv, that's v evaluated over the limits of integration. And in particular, that means I've got v final minus v initial. Now over here on this right hand side, the first thing I want to do is come back to the fact that a is a constant. If a is a constant, that means I can pull it outside of my integral. And I have just the integral of dt. Now again, that's a nice simple derivative or integral, and that's t evaluated over my limits of integration. Now when I'm integrating it from 0 to t final, that's going to give me a times t final minus 0. Obviously, t final minus 0 is just t final. So if I rearrange this equation, this says that v final is equal to v initial plus a t. And here I go back to my t in these equations is the final time associated with my final velocity. So this gives us one of our equations that's commonly used for situations where the acceleration is constant. I can then use that equation as my starting point for the next one. So if I start off here and say v final is equal to vi plus at. Now, when I get to this point, I need to be a little bit careful. You see, I've said v final, but I'm still working with variables here. I could have easily said that this was v of t equal to vi plus at. And that velocity function is dx dt. Well, if I rearrange this equation, I can rewrite it in this form. Now notice I'm not going back and plugging in a because a is just a constant at this point. So when I've got my equation for the position, I can integrate both sides of this equation. Again, for time, I'm going between 0 and some final time. And over here on position, I'm going from some initial position to some final position. Integrating, integration here on the left side yields x final minus x initial, also called delta x, the displacement. Over here, we can look at the fact that we really have two terms, the integration of vi dt 
plus the integration of a t dt over the same limits. vi is my initial velocity specifically defined at a function at a position of time equals zero and therefore that can go outside of the integral and I get vi t from zero to some final time and over here my a comes out front and I've got the integral of t dt. Now the integral of t dt is going to give me one half t squared where again t is evaluated over that same range. So simplifying these down this is going to give me vi times my final time. This one can be written as one half a t final squared because again the zero squared part's going to drop off. And if I write this not using my final time but the more generic t, then I can say delta x equals vi t plus one half a t squared. So that gives me my second really commonly used equation for constant motion, motion with constant acceleration in one dimension.